Dzień dobry, mam na imię Rob. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at an incredible story about a man called Witold Pilecki. He actually volunteered to go into Auschwitz. I, I'm so looking forward to learning about this guy. And if you do too, make sure you go down there and click the like and subscribe button. Auschwitz was created by Nazi Germany in spring of 1940 in the annexed Polish territories as a tool of terror against Polish population. In this period, no one really um, understand what Auschwitz was. Auschwitz not yet had this kind of a meaning when people were talking in the street. There are people transported to Auschwitz, they somehow disappear, we, we hear nothing from them. From the perspective of the resistance, it was a place that they had to look into. What is this? Is this that's a really interesting point that this guy's made. At one point, people didn't really associate Auschwitz with what we know today, is, is what actually happened. And so it didn't have that effect, And it, it, if that makes sense. It didn't have that fear factor. People knew something was going on, but to what extent, they didn't know. Now, I've said this, I've said this before in a previous video that we went here in... 2018 um went to Auschwitz Birkenau and what's very difficult I found was to be able to I've got a really poor imagination and it's really hard to put myself in their shoes so when you see the like you just saw there when you see the shoes and and things like that and even actually the train tracks with the, you know, the, the the image that you see of Auschwitz with the archway and, and the train tracks going through. None of that really hit me. The the real thing that hit me and made me feel for the people that were, were stuck here um, and suffering here was because we went in January, we were wrapped up. We had puffer coats on, scarves, hats, gloves, and we were still freezing cold. But back then, they had the equivalent of pyjamas. Uh, and that is the one thing in Auschwitz that really got me. Knowing how cold I was, but how much worse it would have been for these poor people. Not nice. Really, really was not nice. And that's just, like, the most minor part of it, right? Christians decided that infiltration of this camp would be uh, of their interest. Madness. Madness. Witold Pilecki urodził się w 1901 roku w Ołońcu. To jest miejscowość w Rosji na północy. I Witold Pilecki, myślę, że on miał w sobie chęć walki. Rok 1939, 1 września, on myślał, że pokonamy Niemców dwa tygodnie. Po, po zakończeniu kampanii wrześniowej, właściwie wojny, wojny obronnej 1939 roku, Witold Pilecki y, dotarł do, do Warszawy. Jednym z niewielu adresów, które miał, do dyspozycji, to była, było mieszkanie mojej matki. I tam właśnie po raz pierwszy zobaczyłem wuja i zapałałem no, olbrzymią sympatię do niego. Konspiracyjne zebrania się odbywały w naszym mieszkaniu między innymi. Dochodziły słuchy, że organizowany jest duży obóz pod, pod Oświęcimiem. Jeszcze wtedy nie było niemieckiej nazwy Auschwitz. I want to almost put in my head. So, so we're told, obviously, he was clearly a fighter and, and the rumors were starting up of, of, of this camp called Auschwitz that they clearly didn't know to what extent was happening there. But I want to know what was going on in his head before, before he went in there. You know, what made him want to do it? You know, yes, I appreciate, you know, maybe he wants to su support the Poles and he wants to do his bit, but... 
I want to know what, so his thoughts were before he went in and then how he felt when he was in, because that must have been a real shock. You know, I don't think they would have been thinking, I don't think the polls would have been thinking to what extent was actually happening, how bad it really was. I tutaj właśnie Aleja Wojska Polskiego, 40. Więc miejscem, y, mieszkaniem, gdzie mieszkał Witold Pilecki w tej kamienicy, to jest drugie piętro. O, jakiś nawet... Można coś zobaczyć. To jest stąd Witold Pilecki wyszedł na ochotnika do obozu. We wczesnych godzinach ran, porannych przybiega do naszego mieszkania dozorca, pan Jan Kiliański i mówi Panie Witoldzie, Niemcy wygarniają mężczyzn z domów, mamy dobrą skrytkę w kotłowni, a wuj mówi Panie Janie, tym razem nie skorzystam. A wuj się przygotował, ubrał się już i walenie do drzwi jest. Mama poszła otworzyć w drzwiach mundurowy i cywil pyta, pyta ten cywil, czy jacyś mężczyźni tu są. Ja miałem misia, który mi wypadł. Ja byłem w łóżeczku, wypadł mi na podłogę i wuj jeszcze podniósł mi go, dał, ucałował mnie w czoło. Aha, jeszcze przechodząc koło mamy, zamelduj komu trzeba, że wykonuje rozkaz. Tylko tyle przekazał jej. No i matka się do, domyśliła, że że to było zaplanowane wszystko i... When Witold Pilecki arrived at the camp, he enters into the world of absolute terror. And the SS made sure that everything here in Auschwitz has this task of breaking people. Opisuje, że już na samym początku ma wybite zęby, bo Niemcy chcieli, żeby numer obozowy trzymał w zębach. Nie? On się na to nie zgodził, został uderzony jakąś pałką. No, był tam bity, katowany. In the very early period, prisoners would sleep on straw. And only from fall of 1941, uh, such three-level bunk beds, as you can see here, were placed in the rooms of Auschwitz I. And usually two prisoners would take one floor, so of course the, it was very, very overcrowded and we are now in block 3A, the upper floor of this building and in one of these rooms, Vitor Pilecki. Uh, looking at those, I've been in there, I have been in there as well and if you compare this with, I think Birkenau, I think this is Auschwitz and the next one's Birkenau, it might be the other way around, uh, but the wooden huts, they, they were clearly a lot worse, um, although these aren't grey, obviously, uh, these these are the sort of the best of a bad situation, to put it on minor terms. I um, slept as a prisoner of Auschwitz. When people look at the story of prisoners in Auschwitz, the first impression would be that these people always supported each other and tried to help each other. Bet and they that didn't. this is just one community that uh, will always stand behind one another. And actually, because of the conditions, because of the starvation, because of the violence, because of fear, because of terror, people simply make decisions to survive. And sometimes it means that your decision will harm someone else. This is the diabolic world of the camp. How true is that? You know, at the end of the day, people are trying to survive. So, if, if for example, you're trying to survive, you know, you go... <laughs> You become selfish sometimes. People, it, not everyone, but some people unite and some people become selfish. And you've seen this in films and TV and, and even in real life. People become selfish because they are desperate uh, and they will throw other people under the bus. For, you know, other people will suffer if they think um, that they can save themselves and actually the funny thing is that's what I, I i assume that's what the germans the nazi germans um 
would have used. They would have used people's desperation to help themselves, you know? So the Germans, if they want to achieve some certain things, they will use the prisoner's desperation to almost, almost basically rat out the other people, you know, grass on the other people to, to sort out issues. It just, yeah, people react differently and you can't blame someone for being selfish in a life and death situation. When we talk about Auschwitz, how should we understand resistance? Is it just the kind of a military planning and escapes and revolts, or is actually trying to survive and help other people in this reality already some kind of a resistance? No, he stworzył strukturę wojskową. To jest ważne. W tym piekle stworzył strukturę, gdzie było jakieś tak licząc 500 osób, ale mogło być więcej nawet. The organization that Pilecki built in Auschwitz is based on system of fives. So he tried to have people in different work units, in different work groups, to be able to gather intelligence information about what is happening in Russia. He could tell from his own perspective how the living conditions look like, how the camp looked like, but he didn't have access, for example, to numbers of prisoners. He had prisoners who, for example, work in some of the SS offices and who had access to documents, to files, or people who worked in a hospital. He is simply gathering information from the network that he is creating. Opisuje te metody, jakie stosują Niemcy, opisuje transporty, ilość y, osób, która tam przebywa, która przyjeżdża. Jakby opisuje od wewnątrz to miejsce nie? i przesyła te informacje i chce powiadomić świat, żeby świat się obruszył tym, a świat milczy. How did he get the information out? I'd love to know that. How did he... How did he get this information that he's gained about the conditions and what's happening? How did he get it to the outside world? They say about, you know, underground and all that, but I assume that doesn't specifically mean literally underground. But I would like them to have gone into that a little bit more and saying how he did these things, because, you know, at the end of the day, he's gone in poorly treated, but he's actually stuck to what he was trying to achieve, which is incredible. He hasn't cracked he is stuck to what he was trying to achieve. Time to escape. Most Did of he? the escapes from Auschwitz happened from the outside. Escaping through the barbed wire fences was basically impossible. There are two lines of barbed wires and there is something that looks like a, like a curb. These are in fact uh, cement plaques that are built into the ground to, to a certain depth so that people wouldn't be able to, for example, create a, some kind of a tunnel under. He manages to be signed off from his regular working unit and then thanks to the help of the organization he and two other prisoners he plans to escape with can be assigned to the bakery unit outside. They also made sure that they will be in the night shift and they go to the bakery and they kill the alarm, they cut the wires and then at night when there is an opportunity three of them try to simply open this massive metal door and then, then they, they simply escape. Po ucieczce z obozu w Oświęcimiu, w Auschwitz, Witold Pilecki znowu wstępuje do konspiracji. 1 sierpnia 1944 roku Witold Pilecki włącza się do powstania warszawskiego. Pierwsze zadanie, jakie dostali, to było zlikwidowanie snajperów niemieckich, którzy w mundurach cywilnych, nie, w ubraniach cywilnych byli na terenie Polski i z dachów strzelali do I've got to go back to the escape. The, the the commentary on this makes it sound too easy. Was it as simple as they're making out? It was basically cut a wire, walk out. Surely that is overly simplified. And I'm sure it is because it's a, it's a 11 minute video. I'm sure it's slightly oversimplified, but it was possible. You know, people were able to escape and clearly he 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 rejoined um he rejoined uh the the protection of poland basically and he and he got back to fighting wow
do, do powstańców. Przede wszystkim szukali oficerów. Oh no, was captured again. But was liberated. Aresztowany przez reżim komunistyczny w 1947 roku, poddany brutalnemu śledztwu, skazany został w sfingowanym procesie, czyli to były fałszywe zarzuty na karę śmierci. My great grandma, for example, she, she remembered it very lively that one day she was bringing the, the package for him to the prison and they told him, well, Bielecki, no, he, he's not here. For like 40 years she was hoping that maybe they, they just brought him somewhere to some mines in, in, in Siberia or somewhere, so she, she was hoping that he's coming back one day. So actually, at, in, in 1990, I think, was the, she finally got the official document saying that, yes, he was shot dead. In, and for so many years, she couldn't tell anyone. Yeah? It was forbidden to, to even mention Witold Pilecki in the communist times. He was to be forgotten. Wow. Something that we take from the legacy of Pilecki is that he always refers to the organization, that he wouldn't be able to do anything without the cooperation of many different people, sometimes coming from many different political uh, backgrounds and cultures. And all these people finally could understand here in this extreme world created by Nazi Germans that it is important to cooperate. Wow. What an incredible story. Uh, this man, Pletsky, just kept going, didn't he? He kept fighting. That, that's, that's what's incredible. Like I said, the fact that they didn't, he didn't know to what extent was happening at Auschwitz. He threw himself into it to, to find out. After, you know, having his teeth knocked out pretty much, uh, he stuck to the plan. <laughs> He, he managed to get information out to the outside world. He managed to escape. He fought against the Nazis. He then fought against the communist regime as well. And his ending was firing squad, I assume. Um, crazy, crazy story. Uh, uh, courage, determination. What other adjectives can I use? Uh, just... Incredible, incredible. And I, th and I think hearing real stories like this helps to bring to life um, for the younger generation like myself or even younger than me, it helps to bring to life what actually happened. I think having real stories helps create more of a connection. It's awful seeing things in real life. It's awful seeing the, the photos of all the all the prisoners but actually hearing the stories is adding a, an extra element that just creates a link between the past and the present. Incredible story, uh, Vitold um, Pletsky. Uh, just, I don't even know what to say now. It's just fantastic. Thank you so much. I, I just love learning. Like I said, I've been here. And so to be able to learn even more is fantastic so thank you so much thank you so much for watching maybe some of you have learned as well make sure you like and subscribe if you've got any more videos that you'd like me to look at um, then either in the discord server or in the uh, or in the comments down below they need to either be in english or have english subtitles i am not that good at polish just yet thank you so much make sure like subscribe and i'll catch you next time Papa. -pa.